Hi, it's Katrina. Mongol arachne. Around 165 million years ago during the Jurassic period, a spider roughly the size of your face lived in what is now the autonomous region of Inner Mongolia in northern China. It's the largest fossilized spider ever found. Dubbed Mongolarachne jurassica, it was first described in 2013 by paleontologist Paul Selden after being dug up by farmers in a prehistoric fossil hotbed known as the Jiulongsheng Formation. Lots of cool stuff has been found here. Researchers have only ever found two specimens of this spider, one male and one female. It shocked scientists to realize that the male was bigger than the female, which rarely happens among spiders. You know, in most cases, it's the female that's huge. What makes the discovery even more unique is that most researchers typically find species that have similarly sized males and females in caves. Yet this spider was found in volcanic ash, near a former lake and far from any caves. This shows that the ancient spider may have lived in open or forested areas, but it's possible that it descended from a cave-dwelling species. It appears as though this specimen fell somewhere between primitive and modern spiders, according to Selden, who said that it was most likely capable of spinning large webs. This is a modern trait, as opposed to the earliest proto-spiders who could produce silk, but they didn't weave it. Spiders rarely appear in the fossil record, so it's entirely possible that it wasn't the largest prehistoric species or even the largest species of its era. Discoveries are still being made as technology improves, and because in some places amateur fossil hunters have found that they make more money selling fossils to museums and universities than they do at their day jobs. Pulmonoscorpius kirktonensis, known less formally as the lung scorpion or the breathing scorpion, Pulmonoscorpius kirktonensis is an extinct species of a land scorpion that thrived during the Carboniferous period, sometime between 346 and 330 million years ago. Scientists discovered the creature's fossils in the Scottish county of West Lothian, at a former limestone quarry and fossil site called the East Kirkton Quarry. Based on the evidence, researchers believe it may have exceeded two feet in length. That's about the size of a golden retriever. Scientists are admittedly unsure of what the lung scorpion ate, but they suspect it had a powerful sting and may have preyed on smaller arthropods and insects, as well as small four-legged land mammals, amphibians, reptiles, and birds. Like several other creatures of the Carboniferous period, it's believed that the lung scorpion achieved its massive size primarily because of the high oxygen content in the air during its lifetime. Mostly, it resembled a larger version of modern scorpions, although it had much bigger eyes, suggesting that it relied more heavily on its vision to hunt than scorpions do today. Chimera rachni yingi In early 2018, scientists announced the discovery of an ancient proto-spider trapped in a 100-million-year-old block of amber. Dubbed Chimera rachni yingi, the creature had a tail, unlike its modern relatives. Researchers found the prehistoric specimen in a remote rainforest of Myanmar, a little studied area where scientists believe direct descendants of the species could still exist today because of its small size and its habitat, which human activity has not yet drastically altered. Dr. Paul Selden, who has studied many fossilized spiders, including this one, told the BBC that while it's unlikely, it's also possible. The creature's small size is one advantage that may have enabled it to persist into modern times. These creatures lived during the Cretaceous period, when some of the fiercest known dinosaurs, like T-Rex, were known to walk the Earth. It has a combination of ancient and modern features, which is why it's named after the Greek mythological hybrid creature known as the Chimera. While this mixture of traits isn't surprising, it was the first time scientists had observed a prehistoric spider with a tail, which made for a groundbreaking discovery. Researchers have not yet determined what the spider used the tail for, or if it was venomous. The species also had spinnerets, but couldn't weave its silk. As a relative of the most primitive living group of spiders that shares a common ancestor with today's arachnids, this spider has helped to fill a gap in the scientific understanding of how modern-day spiders evolved. Dr. Russell Garwood of the University of Manchester, a co-researcher on this study, said, We have known for a decade or so that spiders evolved from arachnids that had tails more than 315 million years ago. We haven't found fossils before that showed this, and so finding this now was a huge but really fantastic surprise. Laganome Gopidae 
99 million years ago, a mother spider became encased in amber while protecting her offspring in the rainforest of what is now Myanmar. Scientists described the stunningly preserved specimen in a study last year, noting that observers can see the female clutching an egg sac filled with pre-hatchlings. She hailed from the now-extinct Lagonomogopidae family of spiders. Scientists found that ancient arachnids guarded their children closely after birth, and that their offspring stayed with them for some time. It's one of very few known fossilized examples of a spider showing motherly love. These spiders looked similar to modern jumping spiders, but aren't related to them and possess traits that suggest they were nocturnal. But science still has a long way to go in learning about prehistoric spiders, and the only way to do that is to make more discoveries. Experts are increasingly turning to the region where the mother spider was found, which is a hotbed for ancient fossils. The spider's feeding habits are unknown, but because they had such large eyes, scientists believe they were visual hunters. Experts also believe they had specialized diets. Because of this, if their prey became extinct, so would they. This is speculation, so they will probably never be able to test the theory. Scientists also believe that climate change could have been their downfall. Anomalo Caridid The arthropod phylum of invertebrates includes many modern-day creatures, including insects, centipedes, crabs, spiders, and other animals that have an exoskeleton, a segmented body, and paired jointed legs. Scientists believe modern arthropods descended from a common ancestor called the Anomalocaridid, a seven-foot-long creature that lived roughly 480 million years ago. A fossilized specimen found in the Sahara Desert of southeastern Morocco has offered some clues about this cryptic predecessor to modern-day bugs. This ancient creature lived during the Ordovician period, when the now very dry region was home to an inland sea on the supercontinent of Gondwana. Some creatures were just starting to walk on land, yet it's unclear how they evolved to have legs. Unlike earlier specimens, the most recently discovered fossil, found in 2015, shows that the ancient animal developed two sets of leg-like flaps that were used for swimming, that eventually developed into legs. Like many other prehistoric discoveries, the findings have helped scientists fit a new piece into the puzzle of how the first spiders on Earth developed. Arthropleura Global temperatures were much higher 326 million years ago than they are now, making for a very different world where many places that have four seasons today were tropical. For example, what is now England saw warm temperatures year-round, and it was home to some unique, bizarre, and downright scary creatures, including the biggest animal in the world at the time. Arthropleura was also the largest bug that ever lived, resembling something straight out of a nightmare. This gigantic millipede measured around 8 feet long, weighed roughly 110 pounds, and had somewhere between 32 and 64 legs. To reach such a massive size, it ate a nutrient-rich diet of nuts and seeds, along with small amphibians and other creatures. A fossilized specimen that was discovered on a beach in Northumberland in 2018 was the third of its kind ever found, but it's much larger and older than the other two, which were unearthed in Germany. Scientists found the fossil in a chunk of sandstone that fell onto the land. They believe the site was once part of a river channel that no longer exists, and that the fossil may not encompass the millipede itself, but an exoskeleton that was shed when it was growing. Fossils like this are rare, according to Dr. Neil Davies, who told the BBC that because experts haven't found a fossilized arthropleura head, their knowledge of the creature remains limited. The recently discovered specimen will soon go on display in Cambridge. Titanomerma The Titanomerma genus of gigantic prehistoric ants lived around 49 and a half million years ago during the Eocene Epoch, measuring up to 6 centimeters long with a wingspan of up to 15 centimeters long, it was the largest ant species that ever lived. Examples of this and other similar species have been found in Germany as well as North America, showing that at the time, the climate was warm enough to facilitate the spread of large insects. In 2011, paleoentomologist Bruce Archibald reported the discovery of what he called a monstrously big ant. Found in the Green River Formation hotbed in the state of Wyoming, the creature measured roughly two inches long, roughly the length of a hummingbird. To Archibald's surprise, it had been sitting in a drawer unnoticed for quite some time at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. He immediately recognized it as a giant prehistoric ant that was likely related to the well-known fossilized specimens from Germany. 
Dubbed T. Lube, the creature's survival required a warm climate, much like today's giant ants. It lived between 56 and 34 million years ago, when the continents were much closer together and the climate was tropical in the regions where it lived. In Archibald's words, you could have walked from Vancouver to London on dry land. Traversing continents still required crossing through the Arctic, but during this time period, the region was temperate. Because of this, scientists believe Titanomerma crossed between Europe and North America via an Eocene-era land bridge. Jacolopterus Jacolopterus is an extinct genus of Eurypterid, or a sea scorpion, which sprang into existence during the early Devonian period of the Paleozoic era, between around 410 and 406 million years ago. There were two species known as J. renaniae and J. Haweli. J. renaniae fossils were first discovered in Germany in 2007. It lived in the Rhineland region in the western part of the country, from brackish to freshwater. Evidence suggests that this species grew between 7.5 and 8.5 and and feet long. Just one of its pincers measured over 18 inches long. It's the largest arthropod ever discovered, and it dominated the seas until the Permian extinction roughly 250 million years ago. Despite its size, it was lightly built and was probably not one of the heaviest arthropods. J. Haweli lived in the brackish estuaries in the state of Wyoming and was considerably smaller, measuring just 2.6 feet long. There are geologists who believe that because there were higher levels of oxygen so long ago, it caused giant arthropods to evolve. There are others that think a kind of arms race with their likely prey, the early armored fish, caused the evolution. They had to keep up. Megarachne Back in 1980, paleontologist Mario Hunnikin claimed to have identified the biggest spider that ever existed. He called it the Megarachne and estimated that its body was at least a foot long and that it had a leg span of around 19 inches. These measurements were based on partial fossils that were found in a 300 million year old rock in Argentina. Imagine a spider the size of your arm. Museums around the world classified the Megarachne cervine as the largest spider of all time. But something was wrong with the original find of the Megarachne. The partial fossils that Hunikin was talking about seemed a lot like a spider, but it was missing things a spider should have. I mean, it's hard to recreate what creatures really look like when you only have bits and pieces. So, scientists tried to take another look at the giant spider, but the original specimen was now hidden away in a bank vault. Nobody was able to view the specimen until 2005, along with a newly discovered megarachne fossil. A group of researchers published a paper arguing that the creature was a eurypterid, or a sea scorpion, rather than a spider. It was an aquatic creature, and it was almost two feet long. It certainly wasn't small, but its reclassification as a sea scorpion meant it was medium-sized compared to other specimens of its kind, and this giant spider was no more. The BBC documentary Before the Dinosaurs Walking with Monsters actually included the spider, but at the last minute they had to change it to a smaller spider when the news came out. Euphoberia The extinct Euphoberia genus of millipedes was much like modern versions of the bug in shape and behavior, but it was much larger, growing up to three feet long. It existed in what is now North America and Europe between 323 and 299 million years ago, during the late Carboniferous period. During this time, the world was unimaginably different from what it is now. The continents were much closer together, with the land masses that eventually became the eastern US and northern Europe situated along the equator, while China and Siberia sat at high latitudes in the northern hemisphere. Scientists don't know what the gargantuan millipede ate, but they have an idea based on the diet of the largest modern centipedes, which feast on animals as large as birds, bats, and snakes. And while today's centipedes only reach up to 10 inches long, one can only imagine what a prehistoric creature over three times the size ate. Their modern cousin, the Amazonian giant centipede, has been seen feasting on bats. They climb the walls of caves and grab the bats with their front legs. They use their back legs to cling to the cave wall. They can hold on for a really long time while they are munching on their prey. Although the venom paralyzes the prey, it's not deadly to humans, but it hurts like a bee sting. Meganeuropsis The dragonfly-like Meganeuropsis is the largest known insect of all time. 
This extinct genus of griffin fly lived in what's now the central United States during the Permian period, between 317 million and 247 million years ago. There were two described Meganeropsis species. Meganeropsis permiana was discovered in Elmo, Kansas in 1939 as a partial wing fossil. It had an estimated wingspan of nearly 30 inches, or around two and a half feet, which is comparable to that of a modern-day hawk. M. americana was essentially the junior version of M. permiana. Scientists discovered it in Midgo, Oklahoma in 1940. A four-wing fragment that was preserved at Harvard University's Museum of Comparative Zoology measures 11 inches long, along with a complete reconstructed wing measuring 12 inches. It had an estimated wingspan of 27 inches. Both species resembled the dragonfly but were only distantly related primitive versions of it. They existed long before birds, bats, and dinosaurs roamed the earth. Meganeropsis possessed a pair of powerful toothed mandibles, suggesting that it was highly predaceous and was uncharacteristically tough for a bug. Meganeropsis ceased to exist at the end of the Permian, the victim of a mass extinction that obliterated more than 90% of all life on Earth. With this catastrophic event, the high oxygen levels were gone, and no insect would ever reach that size again. The Vampire Fish The vampire fish spends its entire life living in the rivers of the Amazon. It's called the vampire fish because of its preposterous fangs. This fish has a mouth filled with teeth. It has two rows of extremely sharp fangs and two massive daggers that give it such a brutal reputation. The fangs extend upward from its jaw about six inches, but the teeth aren't serrated or particularly sharp. They are more like railroad spikes, designed for puncturing victims like pointy skewers. According to the International Game Fish Association, the largest vampire fish on record weighed about 40 pounds and was three and a half feet long. That's larger than the more famous piranha. And to be honest, the vampire fish is significantly deadlier. They are notoriously aggressive, antisocial, and hostile toward humans. There are no known cases of a human being killed by the fangs of a vampire fish, but that doesn't mean it's never happened. In the wilds of the Amazon, not every fish-related death is written down in an official record. Prehistoric River Rat In the Amazon jungle, there was once a rat as big as a person. This gigantic forest rat could reach an astounding length of about five feet, earning it the title of the biggest rodent to ever live in South America. Scientists called it Neopiblema acrinsis, and it had two huge incisors that were curved for slicing apart its victims and also for chewing on nuts. This monster looked extremely similar to any rat you might find in your local sewer, only it was the same size as most average-sized humans. This thing would have been able to stand on its hind legs, push you onto the ground with its front legs, and then eat you alive. And seeing as this thing was a rodent, it would have had about three or four hundred of its friends there to help. We know about this terrifying rat because there were two skulls discovered at a fossil site in the western Brazilian Amazon. One of these skulls was so perfectly preserved, it still had impressions of the rat's brain. Scientists were able to look at detailed imprints of olfactory bulbs that process odor, and they also had a full view of the frontal and temporal lobes. This allowed them to be able to see how the rat controlled its thoughts and actions. To give you an idea of how big this rat was, it was almost double the size of a capybara, the world's current largest rodent. The prehistoric rat weighed 176 pounds and went extinct roughly 10 million years ago. While it may not be a creature living today, it does give us a glimpse into the prehistoric world of giant tropical forest monsters. Huge rats, snakes that could grow 40 feet long, and sloths as big as polar bears. The creepiest arachnids The Goliath bird-eater is the biggest spider on the planet, and one of the most horrifying things you can find in the Amazon. It can grow nearly six inches in length, and with its legs spread out, it's roughly the size of a dinner plate. Although it's so big and scary looking, it's completely harmless. The only creatures in danger from the Goliath bird-eater are the birds and lizards it eats. Like the praying mantis, the female bird-eater eats the male when they're finished mating. The female eats her partner to get an extra boost of nutrients, and then will lay about 200 eggs. 
The Goliath bird eater is only one of many spiders that live in the Amazon jungle. There is the giant fishing spider as well that weaves its webs above the water. However, the fishing spider's real talent is that it can spend up to one hour underwater while it looks for food. It can even sail across the water like a living boat, using the wind to push its body across the surface. It's such a clever predator that it's adapted to eating everything from lizards to tadpoles and even small fish. The Amazonian Puma The mountain lion is known by many different names. Some call it a cougar, others call it a puma, and many call it a panther. Whatever you want to call it, the mountain lion is a giant cat and one of the world's greatest apex predators. There are six distinct subspecies of puma ranging from North America throughout the jungles of Central America and stretching as far as the tip of South America. What makes the puma a truly fascinating creature is that almost every Native American group from the frozen north of Canada to the great cities of the Inca believed the huge cat had symbolic significance. The Inca believed the puma represented strength, intelligence, and wisdom. The ancient city of Cusco was likely built in the shape of a puma, and the sacred Lake Titicaca's name roughly translates to Mount of the Puma. In South America, the mountain lion can be found in just about every nation. They live high up in the Andes Mountains as well as the jungles of Venezuela. They stalk the Amazon just like they stalk the forests of Canada, always searching for prey, covering huge swaths of land all by themselves. According to the Mountain Lion Foundation, the puma population is not increasing, and more are being killed now than ever before because of habitat destruction, trophy hunting, poaching, poisoning, and being struck by vehicles on the roadways. I want to give a quick shout out to Steve Rostin and Connie Kutruzula. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, welcome, and be sure to subscribe for more videos like these. Giant River Otter The giant Amazonian river otter is the biggest otter in the world, growing to an unimaginable length of almost six feet. These things are huge and reside in the Amazon basin of South America. They look quite similar to other otters, only much larger. Surprisingly, a single Amazonian otter can grow as long as most people are tall. Oddly enough, these otters are closely related to other mammals like the badger and the wolverine. They are also extremely dangerous because of the simple fact that they live in massive family groups. Giant otters are too smart to be wandering through the Amazon jungle by themselves. They can typically be found in groups of up to about 20 individuals. A single six-foot otter may not be deadly on its own, but try fighting 20 of them at the same time. An organized group of giant otters can take down a fully grown caiman or basically any other large predator that lives in the jungle. These guys are so smart and so quick, they are known for hunting anacondas and wiping out entire schools of piranhas. Sadly, giant otters are currently listed as endangered on the IUCN Red List. They were vulnerable up until 1996 and have been endangered since the year 2000. We can't be sure, but these fierce river critters may not be around much longer. River Sharks As hard as it is to believe, there are sharks in the Amazon River. You could find yourself being mauled by a 265-pound bull shark, thousands of miles from its home in the ocean. Surprisingly, one of these sharks was captured near the Amazonian jungle town of Iquitos, Peru in 1963. The bull shark is not a native resident of the Amazon jungle. Like most sharks, they live in the ocean, where there's salt water. And yet the bull shark has a strange evolutionary adaptation that allows it to tolerate being in freshwater for long stretches of time. It's one of only two living species of shark that can stomach fresh water, and the other is the appropriately named river shark. How they manage to survive in fresh water is the truly interesting part about these creatures. The bull shark has osmoregulating kidneys that sense when the salinity of the water changes. The kidneys then switch gears and recycle vital salt throughout the body since there is no more salt in the water. Most scientists think bull sharks wander into the Amazon River from the ocean for reproduction purposes. Bull sharks, over millions of years, have learned that their young have a better chance of survival if they are born in the river. The baby bull shark doesn't have as many huge predators to worry about in the river as in the open ocean. 
Then, after the bull shark grows up, it will find its own way back to the sea. Armored Suckermouth Catfish The armored suckermouth catfish, commonly called plecos, is a surprising creature from the Amazon rainforest that can not only swim, but can also move around on land. In fact, the way that it moves around on land is so strange and unique that scientists had to make up a new word for it. They call it reffling. According to Noah Bressman from Salisbury University, reffling is a form of terrestrial locomotion, and it's unlike anything seen in any other animal. Bressman recently published a study on these strange Amazonian fish, and he has a whole research facility dedicated specifically to learning more about how fish walk. He has found that Placos can walk over 50 feet from the nearest body of water to search for earthworms flopping around on the dirt. Even though these strange catfish are native to the Amazon, they can be found everywhere from Arizona to North Carolina. The liar-tail Pleco is a popular pet, something you usually see clinging to the glass wall of an aquarium. Irresponsible aquarium keepers have dumped so many of these catfish into ponds and lakes that they have taken over huge parts of North America. In total, there are over 920 described species of armored sucker mouth catfish. Every single pleco belongs to the Loricaridae family, making it difficult to talk about one individual fish. Still, most have the ability to walk on land, and some can even climb up waterfalls using wiggling motions like inchworms. The Mantis Leo Lana with National Geographic recently did an in-depth study on the praying mantis. Leo and his team were given a grant by the National Geographic Society to spend a month in the Amazon jungle in order to study the unknown species that typically only come out at night. They used specialized UV lights to identify the strangely alluring insects in the darkness. During their research, which took place in October of 2021, Leo and his team discovered 10 potentially new praying mantis species, and he says he could possibly find more if given additional time and resources. The praying mantis is one of the coolest insects in the jungle. The most terrifying part of the mantis is that the female is significantly larger than the male. And after the male and female mate to make little mantis babies, the female kills and decapitates the male. It's a first date that ends in murder. One of the more interesting recently discovered mantis species is the unicorn mantis. This is a very strange version of the mantis with a long horn-like structure sticking out from its head. The unicorn mantis lives in Brazil. It has a dusky red body and nobody's entirely sure what the purpose of its horn is. Venomous Serpents The Amazon rainforest covers about 2.72 million square miles, roughly the same amount of land as 48 continental states in the United States. And no matter where you travel, there are going to be snakes that can kill you. The Bushmaster, as an example, is the longest venomous snake found anywhere in the Americas. It lives throughout the shallow Amazon basin all the way to Costa Rica, growing to a terrifying length of 10 feet. There are three different kinds of Bushmasters, and each one has lethal venom. These snakes are considered pit vipers, meaning they have infrared pits on their heads that are used to pick up heat signatures like the predator. The only good news is that the Bushmaster would rather eat a tiny rodent than waste its venom biting a person. Still, if you happen to step on one, its venom is so potent that you would most likely die. However, not all of the deadly snakes in the jungle are scary. The eyelash viper, the smallest venomous snake in Central America, only grows to about 15 inches long and is a vibrant yellow color. It's honestly adorable, unless it sinks its fangs into you, which would almost certainly lead to death. Then you have the Amazonian coral snake, said to be the most venomous serpent on the planet. They are black, red, and yellow in color, and their appearance is so distinct that other snakes copy the colors to try and look more menacing. One of the scariest parts about the coral snake is that after it injects its venom, it takes a long time for it to kick in. And if someone bitten by a coral snake doesn't get anti-venom in time, they typically become paralyzed and then go into cardiac arrest. There is also an aquatic version of the coral snake, 
so you're not safe on land or in the water. New species. The Brazilian Amazon is so rich in life and biodiversity that explorers find a new species of plant or animal almost every single day. Even still, scientists are worried that for every new species they find, another goes extinct. This incredible information comes from a recent review of new found species conducted by the World Wildlife Fund. The organization tracked every new vertebrate and plant species found in the Amazon between 2014 and 2015. Shockingly, they identified 381 reports of new species. These included 216 plants, 93 fish, 32 amphibians, 19 reptiles, 20 mammals, and one new bird species. That's a pretty impressive list of new species being found in just two years during the 2010s. The most shocking part was how many mammals and reptiles were found. Pedro Nasser, a local biologist in Brazil, said he couldn't believe how long the 39 mammals and reptiles had evaded detection. One of the newly discovered mammals was a monkey, and it's been nicknamed the fire-tailed zoge zoge. Researchers even found a new river dolphin, and this was in the midst of the Yangtze River dolphin in China going extinct. The point behind this study is that the Amazon is home to all kinds of amazing animals, many of which we still haven't found. However, with the accelerated rates of habitat destruction, most of the newly discovered species will likely be extinct before they are ever studied in any real detail. Ancient Shark A rare and ancient Greenland shark washed up on the beach in the UK back in March of 2020. According to the experts, the beast could have been roughly 100 years old when it died. What experts don't know is just how such an ancient and monstrous shark ended up on an English beach. It was first spotted in Newland Harbour, stuck on the sand on the southwest coast of England. But before anyone could take the carcass away, the waves washed it back out to sea. Someone saw the shark again two days later, stuck on the beach again. This time, researchers brought it in and took it to be studied. This is only the second time in recorded history that anyone had found a Greenland shark on a UK beach. Abby Crosby, a marine conservation officer at the Cornwall Wildlife Trust, said even though it's a sad incident, it's a valuable opportunity for scientists to study the shark. Greenland sharks are fascinating because they live in the frigid Arctic waters, usually over 8,500 feet below the surface. Plus, a 2016 study proved that they can live at least 272 years. Still, scientists know very little about this elusive shark species and their peculiar biology. Not only can they live for over two centuries, but they continuously grow as they age. Adults can grow up to 24 feet long, although they aren't as ferocious as great whites. So don't worry. Byzantine Church Evidence of an ancient church from the Byzantine era was just found on a beach in the city of Ashdod, Israel. Archaeologists have dated it back 1,500 years to the days of the Eastern Roman Empire. Back then, the city of Ashdod was a major port and thriving hub of activity. The municipal police unit found the ruins of the church as they were doing a routine inspection of the dunes on the coast, not more than a stone's throw from the water. This inspection led to the discovery of a marble pillar hiding beneath the sand. It was so close to the shore that it's a wonder it never got swept away by the tide. People had been walking on top of an ancient church for years without even knowing. To understand what the pillar was doing so close to the shore, we need to go back to 2017, when researchers uncovered the full ruins of the Byzantine church nearby. This newest discovered pillar on the beach was probably a part of that church, likely one of its support columns holding up its heavy ceiling. And believe it or not, this may have once been the most important church in the entire city. It appears on the earliest known map of the Holy Land drawn up in the 6th century a mosaic called the Madaba map. You can see the church hugging the shore as a marvelous structure. Through the ages, the city decayed and slowly fell into disrepair. Then people abandoned it. But what's shocking is how much the water has risen over the last 1,500 years. This church used to be on the edge of the city, and now its ruins are on the beach being brushed by the waves. Colorful dragons After record rainfall in Australia, People were finding colorful creatures all across the nation's beaches. It baffled experts in 2022 when people were finding dozens of these strange, colorful animals known as sea dragons scattered across the sandy shores. 
They were finding many of them in New South Wales. It's not that unusual to find a sea dragon on the beach, but it is strange to find so many of them all across the coastline following a rainstorm. According to David Booth from the University of Technology, Sydney, people found over 20 sea dragons at about the same time, an extremely rare occurrence. These beautiful marine animals normally don't go farther than 150 feet from their homes throughout their entire lives. And when strong currents are sweeping the ocean floor, they hold on to kelp, anchoring themselves in place. Sea dragons are the definition of a home buddy. They never go far from where they were born, and they certainly shouldn't be ending up on the beach in mass numbers. It stumped scientists how this happened after a simple downpour of rain. Experts are saying it's bad news. When this many bottom-dwelling sea creatures end up dead on the beach, it's a sure sign that something terrible has gone wrong in the ocean. An alien in Australia In early 2022, a man stumbled upon what he referred to as an alien while walking on a beach in Queensland, Australia. The supposed alien corpse immediately went viral after the man took photographs and posted them online. The creature had hands like a human, a long tail like a lizard, and a skull like a monster from another dimension. The guy who found this thing is Alex Tan, a local pastor. He told CBS News that when he first saw the animal, he thought it was a flathead fish. But when he got closer, he knew that wasn't the case. He didn't know what the thing was, only that it was about three feet long. The one thing Alex knew was that he had stumbled upon something strange and unique. After he posted the photographs of the mysterious alien on social media, the public went crazy with ideas. Some called it a chupacabra, some said it was an extinct marsupial, but an associate professor at the University of Queensland had a different idea. He said the animal was probably a brush-tailed possum, one that had gotten swollen from being out at sea and lost all its fur. This expert, named Stephen Johnson, says it's obvious by the skull and hind limb. It probably got washed out to sea during a rainstorm. If you found a bizarre creature on the beach, what would you rather find? An alien-like creature or something easier to explain, like a shark or a squid? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Metallic Mystery In 2017, a giant metallic object washed up on a beach in Rhode Island. It was such a strange-looking piece of equipment that nobody could figure out what it was. Not only did it get the attention of local news, it made news headlines around the world. People guessed it could be part of a secret military project, some kind of destroyed implement from oceanographic equipment, or scraps from an unidentified flying object. There is a lot of speculation, and nobody ever solved it. Normally, when stuff like this happens, there is a lot of buzz about the mysterious thing washed up on the beach. Then, some official person comes along and confirms what it is. But this time, there was no official person. All we know is that the object was about six feet tall, composed of eight metal poles bent around a circular base. It washed up on East Beach shore, then a construction crew quickly took it away. They dismantled the object, loaded it into a truck, and took it away with surprising efficiency. They took it to be examined by authorities, but we heard nothing about the examination. We don't know what this weird contraption was or why it ended up on the beach. What's your theory? Let me know. Sand Dollars One of the most terrifying events in marine history happened in the summer of 2021. You've probably heard of the mass die-off that occurred during the freak heat wave that struck the Pacific Northwest. But what you may not know is that in Oregon, the massive death of creatures caused by the sudden and uncontrollable warming of the ocean caused thousands of sand dollars to mysteriously wash ashore. Sand dollars are small circular creatures that look kind of like coins once they've died and ended up on the beach. But the ones that were getting stranded during the summer were alive when they showed up. The high tide pushed them onto the sand. Then they got stranded and couldn't make it back into the water when the tide went out. That meant that they got too dry and died before the next tide rolled in. Nobody has ever seen anything like this before in such insane numbers. Sand dollars, which are a type of sea urchin, can only survive for a little while out of the water. They have tiny purple spines that make them look fuzzy. The ones you find on the beach are the exoskeletons of dead sand dollars. Sadly, we don't know what pushed all these sand dollars onto the beach. It was a bizarre incident that hopefully doesn't happen again in the future. Freaky Creature 
At Bondi Beach in Sydney, Australia, beachgoers found yet another freakish animal washed up on the sand. This one also looked a bit like an alien. But the major difference was that it had human lips. It looked like this monster of the deep was waiting for someone to give it a big, wet kiss. The weird creature had skin like a shark. It was about a foot and a half long, and it baffled the locals. According to the beachgoers in Sydney, it didn't look remotely like anything they had ever seen before. Drew Lambert, the man who first found it, was jogging in early April when he came across the unusual animal. At first, he barely even noticed. It was lying in some ocean debris and kind of blended in with the seaweed. But after he took a closer look and realized he was dealing with something beyond bizarre, he took photos and posted them online. After much debate, the supervisor of the Sea Life Sydney Aquarium, Letitia Hannon, was the one who solved the mystery. She said the alien fish with the human lips was a coffin ray or an Australian numbfish. It just looked weird and bloated because it was decomposing and its body was filled up with gas. Ice eggs. In 2019, a rare weather event showed thousands of ice eggs covering a beach in Finland. These ice eggs were not actual eggs, but egg-shaped balls of ice like giant pieces of hail. They were discovered on the beach of Halu Oto Island in the Gulf of Bothnia, which is located right between Finland and Sweden. To compare it to something you might know, the ice eggs on the beach looked like the McDonald's ball pit, except not as colorful and with no screaming children. As for how the eggs formed, it was through a process of wind and water. Tiny pieces of ice got rolled around by the wind. They grew bigger because of more ice forming, and the result was an area of about 100 feet long on the seashore littered with icy eggs. Some are the size of soccer balls, and some the size of ordinary chicken eggs. After 25 years of living in the city, local citizen Risto Matilla, who discovered and documented the extraordinarily rare phenomena, had seen nothing like it before. This is one of those things that is a once-in-a-lifetime occurrence. We'll probably never see another beach covered in ice eggs again in our lifetime. Cannonball on the beach. In Norfolk, Virginia, construction crews were busy bulldozing sand on a local beach when they came across a large and strange surprise. They found a cannonball stuck in the sand. They didn't know what it was at first and thought it may have been explosive. So they called the police. Fire and rescue came, along with the Air Force Explosive Ordnance Disposal and the local cops. They confirmed the object was indeed a cannonball, but that it wasn't hazardous. Cannonballs don't explode, since they are usually fired out of cannons. The bomb squad took the cannonball away for disposal, and we still don't know where it came from. It could have been from an old pirate ship or a more recent military vessel. There's just no way of knowing, so it was probably from the Civil War. We also don't know how long it was stuck under the sand until those bulldozers came along and found it. Sea Cucumbers Sea cucumbers are some of the coolest yet most disturbing things you can find on the beach. These strange animals have no limbs and no eyes. All they have are a bunch of organs sandwiched between a mouth and an anus. And although people that find them on the beach usually mess with the creatures so they squirt gunk out of their rear ends, there is a lot more to these mysterious sea animals than just milky goo. Sea cucumbers are worth a crazy amount of money. Per pound, normal cucumbers are usually under $3. But if you want a pound of sea cucumbers, you're looking at over $1,500. These things are so valuable, people comb the beaches looking for them. And they also risk their lives diving into the ocean to collect them. The reason goes back centuries. Sea cucumbers were a prized delicacy in Asia for hundreds of years, only eaten by the wealthiest citizens. They treated them as delicious treats high in protein. Then, in the 1980s, when we ordinary peasants could finally get our hands on what used to be delicacies, demand for the creatures exploded. The growing middle class in China all wanted to get their hands on juicy sea cucumbers. And so the hunt was on. The more unusual looking the sea cucumber, the more money they could sell it for. And considering there are over 1,250 different species, that means a lot of variety. Sea cucumbers are still worth a fortune. The most expensive species is the Japanese cucumber, sold for roughly $2,000 a pound. Have you ever tried one? Or do you want to? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching! What's the craziest thing you've ever found on the beach? Let us all know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries. See you next time! Bye!